All right. Um, so by request, I had a video to do something about um, procedural texturing with like file texture original base shaders. Um, so I have three shaders here, um, all of which I just sort of randomly got from textures.com. So this is like Rainbow Damascus Steel, some sort of random moss with the place displacement, and some sort of random stone with displacement. Um, here's the mix shader I have on these two objects here. One thing I do want to point out really quickly um, is just like a few assorted settings with the displacement maps themselves. Uh, so you will notice that like the top of these dudes' head is being cut off. And that is just because basically when you're doing a displacement map or like rendering stuff, Maya basically creates a border where it's like, hey, this is basically my bounding box for the object. And if there's anything outside of that, it's not going to render it. Um, which is happening here, there's enough displacement where it's hitting that bounding box, stopping, and then not rendering, hence the aggressive line. Uh, so really quick, uh, let's just go in and look at the... Actually, sorry, what am I doing? Um, this is actually something that you modify in the shape node of the object itself. Um, so if we go into the object, uh, for this is for Arnold specifically, Redshift doesn't currently work on my computer. Um, in the shape node of the object, Arnold tab, scroll all the way down under displacement attributes, and we have bounds padding here. Uh, you can just sort of systematically try upping that, and then, you know, at this point, this part of the head is not getting cut off. Uh, kind of annoyingly, you do need to do this for every single uh, object with that is actually having that issue, which is, like, like I said, kind of annoying. Uh, but if you don't want your stuff to be cut off, that's kind of what you gotta do. Um, the other thing to be aware of is I have messed a little bit with some of these values. Um, so this is like a file texture that I got online randomly, not something that I custom made for this model. Uh, so some of the values here are a little bit weird. Like normally I wouldn't set the height to something like three. If I was exporting this specifically from ZBrush, uh, I wouldn't really need to do that because it would already just sort of like know what's happening. Um, the same thing, so scalar value is normally set to zero, but in this case it makes the face like super weirdly puffy. Um, this is basically, I believe textures.com does everything with a mid value of 50% uh, gray for the textures, which Maya like doesn't know what the heck to do with. So if you set that to a slightly higher value, it'll sort of um, basically push back what the mid value is so you don't get so much displacement making the entire thing like uber puff. Um, so I'll set that back to three, kind of where I had it, just to make a point. Um, the other thing that I had to do is, still in the shape node, just under the subdivision tab, is turn on the uh, extra smoothing. So if you, it's not like terribly obvious for this particular one, I'll show you on the moss in a second, but like if you look at this, um, it gets a little bit weird with like some of the fine details don't quite come across. Um, you'll also notice a little bit down there, like in the neck, like, so this is with the extra smoothing, this is with none. Um, it's a little bit, like, less shadowed, and you get, like, again, a little bit less detail in there uh, compared to with the extra shading. Um, so same thing, again, with the weird moss head. Uh, this one is really pretty more dramatic with the, this is with those extra subdivisions, and then this is without them. Uh, maybe it's actually not super crazy obvious, but, like, I see a difference in the, in how that, there. Um, so just, it's basically just adding some extra subdivisions at runtime. It does take a little bit longer to render and calculate, but also if you want like the best detail out of your stuff and you're not able to get it, you might just kind of need to turn it on. Um, I did the same thing here. I messed a little bit with the bounce padding and all that good stuff. Um, it seems like maybe the top of the head is still getting a little bit cut off, so I'll just set this up to two. Um, all right, so those are my base textures. Um, Damascus Steel Dude doesn't really have anything interesting going on. Um, I did do some weird stuff. Uh, I'll show you in the outliner in a minute with that. Or not the outliner, sorry, the, the hypershade. Because um, I found the textures weren't importing in a way that I found aesthetically pleasing, and I was like, I need this to be really weird and punchy, rah. So I went a little bit crazy. Anyway, um, so what I was mostly going for uh, in the demo is sort of looking at displacement maps and how they work in compared uh, compared to procedural texturing and just sort of, you know, how they how they relate to each other. So if we look at this weird lineup of heads again, uh, you'll note- oh, I forgot, apparently didn't, uh, didn't do the balance pattern correctly for that one. Anyway, um, so obvious displacement on this rock texture. Um, these textures for the procedural bits are basically like rock texture for most of it. Damascus steel and the raised areas, and then- that kind of looks like abalone right there. Uh, Damascus steel and raised areas, and then moss in the crevices. Uh, and this is- You'll notice like there's no displacement on any of this like this given this displacement should most definitely not be totally perfectly spherical um 
And that is because the displacement node where they are is not in the shader chain for mixed nodes, which is kind of annoying. Um, so if we look at, like, this is the mix for the metal node. Um, so you can see here that we have uh, the Damascus steel shader piped into this, as well as another mix node for the, the stone moss, which is what I did to get the, like, moss in the crevices. Uh, so this is where, theoretically, like, if this was another shader, basically, you have the displacement shader here coming off of this. And you'll notice that this is in no way connected to this mixed metal here. So if we put something in here, it's not going to register it here because, again, this is like being piped. Words. This is being piped into two separate places um, that are in no way connected to each other. So if I add a displacement in here, this is not going to register it. If you added a displacement in this final mix node, and that's what you had assigned to your objects, that would render. Um, so let me really quick just randomly grab. Uh, one of the file text. I should have just used one of the other ones that I had, but let's just go with uh, sure, that makes sense. Off those. Alright, and just make sure again, set the set all of the attributes and stuff up, and like now we have displacement. It's terrible displacement, it makes no sense for this, because I grabbed a random file texture. That's kind of fine. Um, so do just sort of be aware of that. Uh, again, the displacement is only going to show up on this very last shader that you put it onto. Uh, and then if I cared about the settings for this, I would also have to go in and you know modify the mid values and stuff like that again uh, within Maya for that. Uh, also notice that the, I kind of like this one actually, uh, but also notice that the displacement doesn't necessarily change how the shaders are rendering or like how these curvature nodes are working. Um, so in this case, like, we have like, okay, let's just grab this and just straight up delete the displacement map on it. Um, it's not changing, like, it's not adding anything extra into, particularly into here. Um, it's basically just sort of, you know, in the case of the one I added, just sort of like expanding the mesh and kind of making some of the areas of texture more obvious. Um, so the displacement maps, as far as I'm aware in Maya, do not have a good way to affect your procedural texturing. Uh, that is something, in my experience, is usually done through the geometry of the model itself, rather than, like, texturing stuff. Um, so that's a thing to be aware of. Uh, it does, so, like, normal maps and bump maps should show up in these. Um, I do, there are normal maps and bump maps and stuff, like, on these existing textures here. Um, so let me just, for Grinzies, expand this, uh, so you see all of the things. Um, and if we look at uh, like a somewhat sane thing, so I do have um, some assorted little bump maps just like hanging out in uh, over here. Let's see if I can find this a little bit less crazy. Um, so theoretically, like if I were to delete this, it would um, that actually would have an effect on the texture, and you can kind of see it's a little bit less. Um, it's a little bit softer, a little bit less punchy. Uh, if I oops, not bad. If I go back and delete that and put that back in, it gets. It's not a huge difference. Um, this is not a very aggressive normal map, um, but it does get a little bit more sort of crisp with the textures. We set this up to something higher. Theoretically, it should make a little bit more difference, but like, eh. Um, again, I don't think this bump map is terribly, uh, terribly aggressive to start out with. Um, so that's just a weird thing to be aware of when you're doing procedural texturing and using file textures for things in terms of like bump and displacement maps and all that good stuff there. Um, I think I'm actually just going to save the Damascus video for another thing, so I'll just add that to the playlist. It'll be the next video there, but hopefully that made sense.